Well, we just had a big old storm come through. So I had to wait for it to clear out before I could come out and shoot this video. I started this channel when COVID first hit as a way to take the teaching I was doing at church and in other avenues online and make it available to a lot more people. Then shortly after I got the channel started, I began to have problems with my heart, but it forced me to reconsider the values and ideas I hold in relationship between my health, my faith, and how I interpret the Bible. And the vlogs that I've been putting out have been trying to address those issues. As this virus has dragged on and will for a long time, it's really perplexed me with the way in which so many Christians and churches as a whole have responded in very sort of immature and counterproductive ways to the virus. And instead of criticizing, what I want to do is give you sort of a productive way to go forward in all this. And in that regard, what I'd like to do is suggest and review two books that are really worth your consideration. One is by a prophet, the other by a priest, or more specifically, a bishop. One is an Old Testament scholar, the other a New Testament scholar. But it's remarkable the way that the two books overlap in so many areas, even though that they come at the questions from very, very different angles. I also want you to know that I'm going to be giving away a copy of each of these books. So if you'd like a chance to get one of these, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll tell you how to get them. Also, if you'd like to purchase a copy, I'll have the links to them on Amazon underneath this video in the show more section. The first one is Walter Brueggemann's Virus as a Summons to Faith, Biblical Reflections in a Time of Loss, Grief, and Uncertainty. And then the second is God in the Pandemic, a Christian Reflection on the Coronavirus and its Aftermath by N.T. Wright. Now, Walter Brueggemann's book represents a reworking and editing of previous works that he's published. Some of the chapters that he hits in this are Leviticus, Exodus, Job, 2 Samuel, Jeremiah, Psalm 77, which is a particularly insightful chapter, Isaiah 43, and then Isaiah 42, two passages very familiar within the church. Now, all of the texts that Walter Brueggemann addresses in his book are texts that address questions about loss and tragedy, often in unma unimaginable ways. And so they're very appropriate for now. He also examines three typical ways in which have conceived of God's actions during very, very difficult times of what we would call natural evil. Shows how these three responses or answers really are inappropriate and then refocuses them to show perhaps a better way to conceive of what God is doing in the world right now. In regard to Job, he rightly points out how the inscrutability of God and his actions relate to this time. The reason why the coronavirus caught us totally off guard and no one really knew how to understand this is that it came from an area that we didn't understand or hadn't studied yet. It jumped from one species to ours and it's running rampant across the human species right now. But this reveals that no matter how much we think that we have tamed, domesticated, and controlled the world, there is still so much that we don't know. We are still at the mercy of God and the world in which we live in so many ways. In the light of this, Walter Brueggemann's book calls us to an unrelenting hope, not in finding a vaccine or therapeutics that will control this virus, but in the God who controls the world, an unrelenting hope in the inscrutable God that we worship. In his chapter on Jeremiah, he puts that during times of sword, famine, and pestilence, we are still to be faithful witnesses to the faithfulness, the kesed, the unfailing love of God. Rather than give us pat answers, Walter Brueggemann calls us to a renewal of our faith and a reimagination of the church and our culture as we go through these times and emerge into a new normal. After each chapter, he includes a short reflection on that passage, almost a hymn or a poem. And I found that they were particularly useful and helpful in meditating and thinking about what my response to the coronavirus and the times in which I live right now are. So I highly recommend Walter Brueggemann's book to you. N.T. Wright's book, God in the Pandemic, A Christian Reflection on the Coronavirus and Its Aftermath, sprang from a short article that he wrote from Time Magazine 
at the end of March regarding the COVID virus. If Brueggemann's book is prophetic in nature, I would say that N.T. Wright's book is more pastoral in nature. It really asks the question of what can we do as believers during this time of loss, grief, and suffering? Like Walter Brueggemann's book, N.T. Wright finds that the current answers that are being given by a lot of Christian leaders are very anemic. So he goes back and he draws from stories in the New Testament and early church history to challenge us how we should believe, think, and pray during these times. Some of the key texts that N.T. Wright draws upon for this book are the book of Acts, Romans, and Revelation. But one comment he makes in regard to the parables jumps off the page at me because I'm teaching the parables right now. And he writes, that's why Jesus told the parables vivid stories which said yes to the kingdom of God and no to the ways in which most of his contemporaries were seeing that kingdom, that sovereignty, that divine control. And I think that really hits the message of the parable spot on, that they are subversive, they undermine our theology and our accepted beliefs and force us to reimagine the kingdom. His chapter on Acts chapter 11 I found particularly insightful. In Acts chapter 11, a prophet in the city of Antioch has just stood up and told the church that there will be a great famine in Jerusalem. In response to this, the church at Antioch asked three questions. Who is going to be at special risk when this happens? What can we do to help? And who shall we send? This is not a church that's cowering behind the threat of a virus. What's surprising is the degree of overlap between these two books between the prophet and the priest, the Old Testament and the New Testament. For example, in Romans chapter 8, Paul talks about the groaning of all salvation for the revealing of the sons of God or the consummation of the kingdom of God. Now, Walter Brueggemann goes into that from the Old Testament background in Isaiah and shows its background there. N.T. Wright examines it within the context of the book of Romans. In regard to the groaning of salvation and our place within it, N.T. Wright says, that oftentimes we overlook the fact that we are called to lament to times of suffering or crisis. And he mentions that it's impossible to envision Easter without Good Friday. The other thing that he brings up is that God wants to work through his church in the world. God always wanted to rule the world through human beings. So what does this mean in practice? It means that when the world is going through great convulsions, the followers of Jesus are called to be people of prayer at the place where the world is in pain. I highly commend both of these books to you, especially during this time. I've got links to them on Amazon in the show more section. But also when we hit 200 subscribers on the channel, I will select two people who are subscribers to the channel who have left positive comments in the section below the video. And I'll let you know who won the books. So until then, I'll leave you with the benediction of peace.